Sagalion of Broadcasting Corporation. It is a pleasant good morning and a warm welcome to your program. Good morning, Sagalion. The program that always starts your day. I am Shaku Smiler. Our quote of the day is from Walt Disney and it says, The way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Coming up in this edition of the program, Good Morning, Sagalion. President Julius Maldavio hosts fourth annual presidential dinner at Country Lodge, dinner cocktail at Country Lodge in Freetown. Sludge launches media campaign on COVID-19 vaccine optic. Women in the media, Wimsall, condemns attack on the station manager of 98.1, Asper James. And we shall be discussing issues around the census of this morning. All these and more lined up in this edition of the program Good, Mo Good Morning, Sayo Leon. But as all of us know, we are still need to fight against COVID 19. So it is imperative that we keep ourselves healthy. Let us ensure that we adhere to all COVID 19 protocols as um, advised by health professionals. So in every edition of this program, Good Morning, Sayo Leon will bring you some directives, you know, as advised earlier, like I said, by health practitioners. Well, let us watch and see what is there for us this morning. You see where them people here yeah, wear the mask then fine? Well, now so you say for wear your mask. Koba you no send you much all time where you didn't near other person. And the program you're still watching is Good Morning Sayer Yun live on the Sayer Yun Broadcasting Corporation. Well, as you, must, as, you, as, as you may have heard in the news, yesterday uh, President Julius Maldabio um, hosted uh, an annual presidential media dinner uh, cocktail at the Country Lodge Hotel in Freetown. Well, and since he took um, over as President of the Republic, President Bio has been organizing uh, annual presidential media dinner. Well, during uh, these um, gatherings, the President will always um, give assurance to the, the media as to his intention to ensure press freedom and also support to media institutions across the country, including community radio stations. Well, yesterday was the same. But to take uh, this particular discussion uh, forward, I have been joined in the uh, studios by Alpha Saidu. Uh, he is uh, from the uh, Strategic Communications Unit in the uh, Ministry of Information and Communications. Good morning, Mr. Saidu. I'm to the program. Good morning, Sheku. Good morning, viewers. Now, fourth um, presidential media cocktail, this time at the Country Lodge um, Hotel in Freetown. Now, let us talk about. Um, some of the issues discussed yesterday by not only the president but and the minister of um, information and communication and then um, all those who spoke um, including the president of large uh, mr Lassera, and then um, others but first let us talk about uh, some of the commitments uh, the, the president made yesterday towards uh, media empowerment towards addressing media poverty and poverty in the media Thank you very much, Sheku. Yesterday, we had the fourth media presidential cocktail and dinner. Um, this is organized every year since President Bill came by the Office of the Press Secretary and the Presidential Spokesman. Um, it gives the media houses the opportunity to hear from the President. The President we we'll thank them for what they've been doing, helping him to push the country forward. We all know that the media plays a very important role in national development. So yesterday, the president thanked them for what they've been doing, especially with this um, COVID-19. Um, he also assured them that his government will continue to support them 
and uh, the most uh, valuable thing he said yesterday was that he's going to increase this subvention to snatch to 500 million news every year and then he also assured the media that he would always open his doors to them whenever they have issues of national interest they can come to him and then he also assured them that he would help them in getting a suitable place to build their head office because that's a problem Sludge has had for a very long time. So this time the president said he's going to work with them and he would help them to make sure that they have a permanent office. Well, um, according to the president of, of Sludge, you know, Mr. Nasgala, in his own submission yesterday at the County Lodge, um, he said that uh, among promises uh, that are yet to be fulfilled, you know, um, is the one you just mentioned, you know, uh, from, for Sludge to have, um, you know, a land for a construction of a building they call Bears. And um, it was f further, uh, you know, explained, but um, because of uh, the difficulties um, Slash is facing, you know, in terms of having permanent accommodation, that is affecting, you know, um, journalism, or the practice of journalism, you know, um, negatively you know, in some way. So um, when soon do we, uh, when soon are we going to see uh, the, 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 the the allocation of this land, you know, to Sludge, very soon. And then um, Sludge gave government some options. One of them is that they are asking government to give them the old uh, Delimit building along uh, Rodin Street. So government is looking at all the options. Rest assured that very soon something will be done to make sure that Sludge gets the permanent office. Okay, and the, 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 the president also said that uh, the, 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 the subvention, you know, the amount of subvention to Sludge, you know, will be increased, you know, from 200 million leons to 500 million leons. You know, and um, when he said that the media practitioners were very happy, you know, it was a good news received. And, um, but according to the, 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 the Sludge president, Sludge is yet to receive the 2021 allocation. Well, government is working on that. The president assured them that very soon they will receive the 2021 uh, allocation. Um, what this tells you is that this president is always ready to recognize and appreciate uh, the media in this country. You remember when he came, he worked hard, he repeated the, uh, I think it's section 5 of the Public Order Act which now gives the press the opportunity to grow. People can now invest in the media. People can now talk whatever they want to talk. People are free to express themselves. And that gives us international recognition. When um, the MCC, for example, when they were preparing their scorecard, they gave us very high marks for the way this government has been encouraging media houses, media practitioners, and uh, that's good for us. The very important role the media plays should always be recognized and they should be encouraged to do what they are supposed to do. Okay, well, um, um, uh, during uh, that um, dinner yesterday, uh, that cocktail, uh, the president, um, you know, was so, was so uh, humorous to me. I mean, you know, uh, he told a story about uh, the editor, uh, the camera operator, and that of the reporter. You know, they went to this magician for uh, to, you know, to ask for favors. A few of them went, and um, all, uh, the, the, the camera man and and the journalist, you know, um, uh, said they wanted to live in luxury. You know, they wanted some big house. Money should not be their problem. The same to uh, the camera operator. But when the editor was called. The editor, the editor said, he said, the only thing I want you to do for me is to bring back, you know, the, 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 the reporter or the journalist and a lot of the camera operator. And that was exactly what happened. You know, they came back. So what he was trying to say was that, uh, you know, um, the, 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 the editor, the camera person, you know, and the reporter, whatever they do, they always need an editor. 
So they are wishes we are not granted. But the, the editor said, no, I want my cameraman and my reporter. So it was so <laughs> interesting. <laughs> but uh, sometimes it is not you know, all you want, but you will get. I mean, the lesson behind that is that the editor is the most important person yes, for sure. in this profession. Yes. I mean, whatever the cameraman, the editor, editor, whatever the reporter would do, at the end of the day, the final decision will be taken by the editor. So <laughs> that's the lesson that you need. So it, it makes room for people to understand that when you're supervised, you cannot just do whatever you want to do. Yes. And at the same time, you cannot get all those money. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, I'll continue to sing first. I'm here is um, Alpha Sayu Bangura from the Strategic Communications Unit in the Ministry of Information and Communications. Yeah, where he was talking to us about um, you know, uh, the cocktail yesterday um, hosted by Professor Person Van the President at the County Lodge. Uh, this is uh, an annual uh, presidential media cocktail. Uh, this is the, 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 the fourth time the president is hosting uh, such uh, a cocktail uh, since he took over in 2018. He has been hosting you know, a cocktail uh, for media practitioners in the country. Thank you so much. And the program you're still watching is Good Morning Sierra Leone live on the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation. Well, the administrative body of the Sierra Leone Association of Journalists has symbolically received their COVID-19 vaccines. The initiative is to um, urge other practitioners and and work country to get themselves vaccinated. Well, let us now join our own Julian Kruma for that story. Since the first case was reported on March 31st, 2020, Sierra Leone has recorded over 6,000 cases of COVID-19. Through its many mutations, the COVID-19 virus presents a daunting risk to the unvaccinated. So the Sierra Leone Association of Journalists, in collaboration with NACOVAC and other partners, are strongly encouraging journalists and all Sierra Leoneans to take their full jabs. Um, since we had um, the first case of COVID very close to two years ago, we have seen that the cases rise during testing periods. When we had our first case on March 21, an outbreak was declared in Sierra And of course, we have a pandemic, meaning this is a worldwide occurrence. At the peak of the vaccination drive, several members of Sludge and IRN received their COVID-19 jabs. The president of the Sierra Leone Association of Journalists, Hamed Sahid Nazrala, said the fight against COVID-19 requires all hands on deck. Launching this campaign today, I want to call on all media houses to lend their support in raising awareness. I also want to encourage journalists to come forward to take the vaccine. I'm going to lead by example. As Sierra Leone has just recorded the Omicron strain of COVID-19, concerned authorities are hopeful that every Sierra Leonean will be vaccinated. SLBC News, our Julian Kuruma. Well, um, that was um, at some large headquarters where um, journalists, uh, members of the press, the media, actually took their own jobs yesterday. And in the studio to talk more on this is um, one of the, the people behind uh, this particular initiative and um, since um, uh, the outbreak of COVID-19 in this country. Uh, Mr. Ransford Wright has been at the forefront, especially leading you know, media professionals in the fight against COVID-19. And he's also the national coordinator of the Independence Radio Network. Good morning, Mr. Wright, and welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Good morning. You know, I saw you being vaccinated. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that's actually, you know, the motivation behind this, you know, um, I know you've been in, the, in, in this uh, fight, you know, um, since uh, the, the outbreak, so also for, 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 uh, for um, Ebola, you know, you've always been in, you know, in, 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 in the forefront, 
um, leading over professionals and media practitioners, you know, in uh, fights against outbreaks. Now, let us know exactly what was the motivation behind you yesterday mobilizing, you know, uh, media professionals, especially media leaders, for them to be vaccinated. All right, so um, basically, I double as the chairman for the sludge corona response yes. committee. So um, we, we have been involved in the fight for quite a long time, right from the start. And like you rightly said, even before COVID-19, we have always been actively involved when it comes to national issues, particularly um, pandemic of this nature and even the epidemic. Um, we have a platform. You know, the media is significant in terms of influencing society. Um, so definitely, we know that we can use that space not only to hold governments to account, not only to inform people on different things, but also to educate people when it comes to issues of national concern, particularly health issues, public health issues of this nature. Um, so definitely, we have been involved in that. Now, um, we all know that the, I would say, vaccine hesitancy has been a challenge. <coughs> Excuse me. Not only in Sierra Leone, but the world over. It has been a challenge because there is lack of confidence, there are lots of skeptics, there are so many information, misinformation, disinformation, so many things going around. So people don't have confidence um, to go for the vaccine. And even in Sierra Leone, if we want to look at specifically look at Sierra Leone, we have the vaccine. But if people don't go for the vaccine, it will come to a time where the vaccine will expire and we'll not be able to use them and it will be of no use to us. And at the same time, it's a threat to the spread of the disease, your virus. So um, as media leaders, we have been having engagement with Nakovac and other media players. And um, quite recently, we had a dinner um, with media leaders and the um, COVID um, response um, people. So from there, we had discussions and we were looking at what are some of the challenges we're experiencing currently in terms of the response of the public to the um, COVID-19 messages. And because we were looking at it practically that people are tired with you know, COVID-19 messages because of the, you know, the way things are going around all over the world in, in Sierra Leone as well. So we realize that there is not that interest or desire. You can have a nice program on TV or radio, but yet still, because of the lack of interest, people would not really pay attention. So we're discussing what can we do, how can we, you know, get people to come back into uh, their awareness. And one of the activities we agreed on was that as media leaders we could lead a campaign you know to see how we'd be able to raise awareness get a lot more people involved and at the same time we can also lead by example get people to believe that the vaccine is safe um, the vaccine is good for us and um, if we take the lead um, definitely we'll be able to get people to come on. Okay, now, let us talk about yesterday it was at our uh, slash headquarters here, uh, you know, on Kamul Street in Freetown. You know, do you have intention, you know, of going into the regions? Because we have uh, members across the country and um, they also have their own, uh, you know, following. Do you intend, you know, taking this or uh, rolling out of this particular campaign, you know, um, to our colleagues, you know, in, in the regions. Yes, definitely we do. Um, that's that's the plan. We've already started here in Freetown, and of course, uh, yesterday when we had the launch at the Spanish headquarters, we had over 20 journalists who came forward and received the vaccine, which I think um, um, that's a good sign. It's a good encouragement because um, I'm sure if we had not embarked on this activity, um, those people would have still been, you know, sitting down and not coming forward. Um, so we think that there are a lot more who will be coming forward and we need to continue the engagement. And we'll be taking it across all the districts. Um, we have plans to reach out to other districts from now to the weekend. Um, that's something we'll be embarking on. We'll be embarking on. Um, going to the various districts, we mobilize uh, you know, teams there. Now, let us talk, about, let us talk about the messaging. You know, I know at the start of this, uh, uh, this pandemic, uh, you know, uh, slash 
and especially the, the, the COVID-19 uh, team, you know, of which you are the chairperson, uh, developed a kind of um, a template for messaging, the, 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 the choice of words that should be used, you know. So let us know how is that going to reflect on this particular campaign? The well, vaccination, a COVID-19 <coughs> vaccination or vaccine campaign? Yes, well, um, of course, there are approved messages. Um, we can make suggestions, but then um, within the NACOVAC, uh, within the risk communications pillar, there is a unit that is responsible for messaging. So they vet messages, they evaluate them and ensure that the exact or right words are used to describe whatever we are doing. So um, we don't generate messages on our own. Um, even if we generate messages, we have to ensure that um, the public health specialists, they have a look at it, take the context of you know our country into um, consideration and to ensure that the messages are accurate. So we already have messages around the vaccine. Um, of course, we know that maclate is commonly used in Sierra Leone. That's what people can relate with easily because almost everybody in Sierra Leone has had a maclate. Because <coughs> the thing is that, uh, you know, there are people, when you say, Ed, go, uh, get yourself inoculated, <coughs> You know, they get confused. Exactly. They say, go for your job. Yes. Or go for your shop. Exactly. But if you say, my, my claim, everybody yeah. understands. Everybody that. knows you know, what is exactly. my claim. Because so since, uh, since you're a child, exactly. you've been going for, for my claim. Yeah. That is what is commonly used. Yeah. But then, you know, by way of evaluation, you know, um, how do you think um, Sarge and partners, especially um, Sarge and you know, uh, Independence Radio Network, the umbrella body being in Sarge, if you have to kind of um, you know evaluate, although yes, probably you are not the right person to evaluate because if you evaluate yourself, you always give yourself yourself a pass mark. But I don't know how has it been so far. In so far as you know, the fight against COVID nineteen is concerned, the involvement of media professionals. Yeah, it has been very positive. I will tell you, um, we had an activity when well, we did a lot of activity in twenty twenty. Um, so many activities that we were doing, and we had a study. Um, at the end of um, one of the activities we were undertaking. And the result from that was very positive in terms of people getting more information from radio and, you know, other uh, medium, but radio in particular, pa particularly those in the regions, the rural areas, they like radio a, a lot. Um, also, even from the NACOVAC level, they have also done research, they've undertaken research to find out the response of the people. And radio is almost like 70 to 80 percent. We know that definitely there are lots of noise on social media, but the reality of the situation is I'm always confident to tell people that don't joke with radio. We had a bulk of the population. Freetown is just two million plus or less than that. You know, so a good number of our citizens are in the rural areas, and people okay. tend to forget that. And they rely on the radio for correct information. So, so definitely it has been very positive in terms of um, the understanding. The only thing is, because of the, the understanding people had with um, Ebola, Ebola was very fatal. So the response, it was natural. Because of the death rate and all of that, you don't even need to educate people a lot. But with COVID, it's a little bit different. So as a result of that, you have this hesitancy. And then because of the influence of social media, everybody is generating information. Everybody has an idea. Everybody has something to market. So at the end of the day, um, like, like somebody described it, it's a cesspit of information. So people get confused. They get lost as to what is true and what is not true. So that's the reason why we had all of these challenges. And like we're saying, in advanced countries where people are more educated or you have higher percentages of educated people, yet they're having challenges. So how much more Africa? Now let us talk about you know, um, your support um, to, to community radio stations you know, in so far as the fight against COVID-19 is concerned. Especially by way of because I've been to some stations, you know, across uh, the country. There, there, there are some that have limited, you know, broadcast time. They will say, okay, we'll, we'll commence broadcast uh, from 7 a.m. Um, to 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 probably um, 12 or 1. Uh, after which, you know, uh, we'll shut down and we'll come back um, uh, um, from let's say 5 uh, to, to to 9 o'clock, as the case may be. 
you know, they are really constrained when it comes to, especially if you know, to power their, their generators. So what has been your support so far and to community radio stations? Because they've been very instrumental in the fight against COVID-19. Yeah, well, um, the support has been coming in different ways. No. And, um, and we, we must understand the fact that because they are operating in some of these communities which are very small, um, definitely we don't expect the radio stations there to operate like big commercial radio stations in urban areas. So the reality is they, they, they operate within their context. Um, so definitely um, a radio station that is operating 24 hours in an urban area um, is not more important than a radio station operating for six hours in a community. A radio station operates in a community and they're on air for four hour or five hours in the morning. And it's the people within the community knows that, you know, they know that that's when, you know, the radio station is on. And they follow and get a lot more information. So it has been a challenge really in terms of electricity, you know, power, you know, there are lots of challenges. We can't, you know, solve all the problems. But then um, we've been trying to see how we can um, support them in whatever way we can. And um, it's still ongoing. It's, it's work in progress, you know, for community radio stations. We, we, we don't stop. It's a continuous process of engaging and um, supporting and getting them to be able to deliver um, to the various communities within which they operate. All right, and thank you so much. He is Ransford Wright, the chairman um, slash COVID-19 committee and also a national coordinator of Independent Radio Network. Well, our program you're watching is Good Morning Sierra Leone, live on the Sierra Leone of Broadcasting Corporation here at Broadcasting House in England, where he was talking to us about uh, the, the rolling out of the, 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 the sludge a vaccination or vaccine, you know, campaign as yesterday was the launch. And according to Mr. Wright, they are going to ensure that uh, all the districts in this country actually, you know, have a diet of this particular campaign. We are going for a very short break. I will be right back. Good morning. Good morning. As a mother of the house, whenever I want to prepare palm soup, there's no need pounding palm fruit. All I need is Inkulenus Ghana's original palm soup base. This soup is done and its preparation, it is not difficult at all. Inkulenu palm soup base, it's easily done with no difficulties. Just take few ladles and your soup is done. And its flavor, ah, it's amazing. This is Inkulenus Ghana's original palm soup base. And this is Inkulenus Ghana's original spice palm soup base. Iron fruit and turkey berries are naturally added. Also available brown gold natural cocoa powder, sunny gold brown sugar, meat for full flour, chito, pizza, and moringa. All available at Nyami Ado Enterprise, 1 Waterloo Street, Freetown. Inkulenu palm soup base. Ghanaian original taste. Vinto's unique recipe has been refreshing Sierra Leoneans for over 30 years. Only Vinto has the secret blend of fruits, herbs and spices that has tasted great since 1908. Don't be fooled by inferior imitations. Vinto. Insist on the original. I am back, and the program you are still watching is Good Morning Sierra Leone, live on the Sierra Leone uh, Broadcasting Corporation. Well, I still have in the, uh, in the studio uh, uh, Alpha Side Bangura from the Strategic Communications Unit in the Office of Information and Communications. Now, Mr. Bangura, now this annual uh, cocktail that is um, organized uh, every year in December by no less a person than the first gentleman of the land, uh, the president, is something that started and he did make a promise that it is going to be a continuous thing. 
you know, why is all of us we are thinking that um, it is just going, it's not just going to be a one-off thing. But over the years, over the four, uh, over the years, we've seen that um, you know uh, it is something really sustainable, and it's actually a nobility because um, he is the first uh, sitting head of state, you know, um, to uh, to kind of um, be, you know be, been engaging and uh, media pra uh, practitioners in uh, this kind of um, uh, platform. <coughs> So what does this mean for, for the practice of journalism in this country? It means that the media now have a president who is ready to interact with them, a president who is ready to let them understand the important role they should play in national development. Every year, the president would have this uh, presidential cocktail dinner to meet with uh, media houses, media practitioners, the media from him, and then the president of Sludge, the chairman of the Independent Media Commission, will tell the president about issues affecting media practitioners. And this will let the president understand what media practitioners, what journalists in this country really need. And it shows that we now have a president who believes in the importance and the value of journalists and he wants to talk to them every year. Well, and he also said yesterday that um, he started his political career as, as a journalist, in a way, because um, he was Minister of Information and, 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 and Broadcasting. At that time it was Information and Broadcasting. So um, do you think probably it is as a result of that background of his, you know, that is actually responsible for this kind of engagement with the media? Yes. Um, when the NPRC took over in uh, 1992, he was the minister responsible for information. And at that time, the, what is now known as the SNBC was called SNBS. It was there. He had to revive it again to make sure that it is up and running. And since that time, he has had sufficient time to look at the problems facing journalism in this country, how it can help journalists to improve. And he has been doing that. So he has sufficient experience and background in media issues and he's also willing to solve these issues and give the journalists the opportunity to play their important role, which is to make sure that they participate in national development. Don't forget that the press is often referred to as the fourth arm of government, the fourth estate. So they have a very important role to play, making sure that they, they look at what government is doing the old uh, government officials are accountable. They inform people about what is going on. They sensitize people about their civic responsibilities. They have a very, very important role to play. Yes, indeed, uh, the media um, have their role to play, a very essential one. But now let's talk about um, the president um, is among uh, presidents or leaders in Africa, you know, about. Um, that have been invited for the, the, the Turkey Africa uh, Summit, uh, which is going to take place tomorrow in Turkey. Uh, I'm sure uh, our president will be attending. So tell us, you know, um, the, the significance of you know such this particular summit, you know, the Turkey African Summit. Yes, the president would leave today for that summit. We all know that Turkey is now ready to help Africa. So this would give um, African leaders the opportunity to talk to the Turkish government, tell them what they need, and I'm sure at the end of the day, Turkey will continue because they've been helping us. They have a lot of things that they are helping us with, so it's just the willingness to continue to help us in uh, developing this country. 
You know, let's talk about you know some of the headlines uh, the president mentioned yesterday. You know, his headlines. You know, you you, you were there, and you, you you know I don't need to actually um see all of them, but um, like for example, uh, articles uh, written against him. You know, uh, articles criticizing or critiquing his Basi travels. Uh, articles. You know, several articles. <laughs> so so it, it does mean that the president is somebody who reads our newspapers a lot. Yes, yes. Every morning, it would go through all the major newspapers, and um, when some of these <laughs> things come out, he will just laugh. He has a very thick skin. He knows that the press in this country is always interested in what he does, and uh, <laughs> it, 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 it is not something that he, he, he is mad with. You know, he's ready to try it criticisms and um, I'm sure you, you will remember when he, he, he told us about what came out when he abolished the uh, death penalty you know so the, the president understands the media in this country he has been attacked so many times but he still believes that people should be free to say whatever they want to say well, does that he calls on them to be very responsible and constructive in whatever they do. So, uh, does that apply to to his, um, you know, appointees? Because there are times you see people getting angry just because probably a journalist had asked a question. You know, in well, studios, we've seen you know studios uh, studios catching fire because the journalist had, had asked you know a very critical question. Well, the president would always encourage. Um, people who work with him, people who work for him, to copy his examples. I'm sure you will remember um, during his third anniversary, he came to the station, you know, he, will, <laughs> he had some tough questions from journalists. He went to AYV, he went to STAR. We all know that STAR is not too friendly with this government, but he went there. He went to Justice Radio, and this clearly shows that he's so always. This ready. one is not now for uh, you know um, the first date man. No, I'm the president. No, what the I'm question saying is what I'm saying. Does does uh, does it apply you know to to other officials? You know, yeah, well, the appointees. Of his. Well, the president is encouraging all his appointees to copy his examples. They should understand that when you are in a public office. You should be ready to give yourself up to the public for a critical examination of your performance. So he's encouraging them to do that. And I believe a huge number of them are doing that. Okay, and now, uh, Mr. Saidu, um, let us talk about the census. You know, you cannot leave uh, this studio without talking about the census. <laughs> we are now in the six or so, you know, since uh, the commencement of, of the conference uh, last uh, Friday. Now, I'm telling us, um, how, how has it been so far, in so far as, you know, the assessment of the Strategic Communications Unit in the Ministry of Information and Communications, you know, is concerned? Thank you very much, Sheku. Yes, the census is going on. It started last Friday the 10th. Um, there are a few challenges. For example, the payment of the, the statistics and loan officials. And the problem with that is that some of these um, districts do not have a Siloam Commercial Bank because the payment are done through Siloam Commercial Bank. So they had to take money to them. So that caused some delay. But everything is now going on fine. The job is going on. Um, they've been having some few hiccups, but um, they've been able to handle them. Some people are refusing to accommodate the, the, the people from statistics I know some people are creating some rowdiness but thanks to the police they are helping with that so the census is going on it's going to last for two weeks and um, maybe they will add another week from just the mopping up but I believe everything is going on fine 
All right, and thank you so much. He is Alphonse Said Bamura from the Strategic Communications Unit in the Ministry of Information Communications. I still have you in the studio, the chairman for the slash COVID 19 committee. Runs for right. Now, Mr. Wright, um, the fourth wave of COVID 19 is here. How prepared is, 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 is large, you know? I mean, the COVID 19 committee is large for this fourth wave. Well, so that's one reason why we're doing this activity, because we all know that this is December and being the festive period, the movement of people increases. So you have lots of people traveling all, of, all over the place, coming from holidays. And people will, will recall that for a couple of weeks, we were going without any case, you know. And then all of a sudden, in just a day, we had 15 cases as a result of inbound passengers. So it tells you that, you know, the movement of people is a threat. So that's the reason why we are embarking on this campaign. Because um, even as I speak currently this week, um, of course, um, Nakovac is also embarked on um, a massive vaccine awareness, uh, which um, they're also moving, you know, doing house-to-house -house engagements to ensure that people come out and get vaccinated. Because uh, it's a very crucial period. In 2019, the same thing happened. Um, by the start of 2020, we had the third wave, which was very serious. And we all remember that uh, we got to a point where the hospitals were overwhelmed because of lots of sick people. So people may not die, you know, of COVID, but managing the situation when people get sick with the limited hospitals that we have will be a challenge. So, you know, that's the reason why we're encouraging people. It's holiday time, it's festive season, but the most important thing you need to do is to protect yourself. Because if you're protected, then you'll be able to enjoy the holiday. But if the thing is, the reality is right now, you know, people uh, tend to have, to have actually um, relaxed or probably not adhering much um, to some of these uh, preventive measures, of course, as the case may be. Just because probably, like you said, we've been going for weeks without, you know, a case. But now that we know that uh, wave four is here, what is your advice to, you know, not only us, uh, the media professionals, but the entire public? Yeah, so that's why we're encouraging people to come out and take the, you know, the vaccine, the maclet. Take the maclet because um, that is one way you'll be able to protect yourself because um, um, it's important for people to know that. Um, regardless of what happens, you know, we know there are lots of theories here and there, lots of explanations, you know, fake news and all the rest of it, but we're encouraging people, it is in your best interest. Um, the more we come out, we take the vaccine and get the maclet, you know, as we, <laughs> we understand it, yes. um, the better it is for us. So that's what we're encouraging people to do. All right, uh, thank you so much. And he is Ransford Light, uh, the, the chairman for Slash uh, COVID 19 uh, Committee. Uh, earlier, you heard um, Alpha Said Bangura from the Strategic Communications Unit in uh, the Ministry of Information and Communications. Well, that is how we say goodbye. It has been Good Morning, Sierra Leone, which came to you live on the Sierra Leone of Broadcasting Corporation. Many thanks to the entire production team, especially producer uh, Francis Bernard. I am Chef Smiler saying goodbye and have a wonderful day. Make sure you adhere to all of the COVID-19 protocols as we are still in the fight against COVID-19. Goodbye.